I recently beat the permadeath mode for the new Deus Ex game, and I wanted to share my thoughts on what I believe to be the safest sort of combat stealth hybrid build to get you through the permadeath difficulty of Deus Ex, which unlocks after you beat Mankind Divided for the first time. When you get out of the chair and you are finally able to select your augmentations, and it's actually quite difficult getting to this point, uh, since the combat section outside you can't use the augments you want, but here you can finally pick them, and the first pick should be Micro Assembler. Now this perk is a complete game changer. So what we do now that we have Micro Assembler is we can break down every single weapon we pick up to get weapon parts, which are extremely valuable crafting resources that allow you to make multi-tools, which are basically a level 5 hacking skill. However, you can do it while still remaining in their combat first person view, so they're better than level 5 hacking. Uh, you can make Tesla cartridges, which are the best weapon in the game, in my opinion, for uh, at least console players. Incredible auto-targeting, uh, immediate non-lethal takedowns, takes down a lot of stuff. I'll talk more about it later. And of course, bio cells, which you can use to always keep your energy bar topped off and keep access to your augmentations, like the cloak, which is going to be the primary energy hog on this build. Since you want every single advantage possible in this mode, it's worth noting that if you kill the enemies or incapacitate them as you come through this initial section to unlock your augments, the weapons left on the floor will still be there after you get out of that chair and complete this level. So you can go back, pick up all the weapons on the ground, and get yourself a nice little buffer of crafting parts to upgrade your weapons and get you a nice little uh, pad of great consumables to work off of. So you can keep your Tesla upgrade going, your bio cells to keep your cloak going, and multi-tools when you need to hack into something. Uh, so, of course hacking is a very useful upgrade, but you really want to be focusing on things that are not situational, or at least as unsituational as possible. Things that are useful in every single situation, and things that will keep you alive and keep you safe in as many situations as possible. When you boil it down, everything is kind of situational, but you want to really be thinking about what are the most useful upgrades for every sort of shitty situation I can find myself in. Uh, you kind of have to break them into categories. Of course you want some sort of recon if you're doing stealth. You want to be able to know where the enemies are and know if they're looking at you. So I'd really recommend getting that vision cone field. The smart eye or smart vision is a great upgrade tree, however it uses a lot more Praxis points than just putting in that one in your radar to get those vision cones right off the bat. So I'd really recommend just starting with that vision feedback and then working in the smart vision later. It is definitely superior, the smart vision, especially when you start working with a lot more vertical uh, levels with a lot of layers, verticality and such. However, early on, that's not as much of a problem, and these vision cones will basically be all the recon you need. The Peps gun is very fun, but just not quite as useful as the Tesla. The Tesla is basically the best weapon in the game, especially for console players, where the aiming on this kind of PC port feeling game is not great. So that's going to be your bread and butter for combat and stealth takedowns. And the cloak is your energy hog. I really recommend maxing that out probably and maybe focusing on your energy upgrades as well. The, ref the refresh time I don't be believe is as important as the recharge rate since if you use a lot of cloak, if let's say you use your whole bar of cloak and then you kick it off right before it hits that bottom out, the recharge rate is what you're going to be spending the most time doing, letting that bar fill back up to where that little line is that marks your permanent loss in the energy. The recharge delay, as opposed to that long time of filling up that huge bar, is not as important. So I'd really recommend focusing on the recharge rate. I probably shouldn't have put any points into the delay till that was maxed out, to be honest. Naturally, the capacity is important too because that directly equals uh, duration of your cloak. However, 
the capacity can be mitigated by just opening your menu and feeding yourself bio cells over and over again. You can really actually have infinite cloak if you have the bio cells to keep it going. Uh, you never have to leave it off, which is pretty broken. <laughs> And that feeds back into why the microassembler perk is so important. And microassembler also allows you to make Tesla ammo. You can make eight for 75 weapon parts without any of the uh, extra perks put into the microassembler tree. You only really need that one to get you through the end of the game. Weapon parts are so, so plentiful if you are ritualistically taking down enemies and breaking down those weapon parts and realizing that these weapon parts are duration for my augments, my cloak, ammo for my Tesla, hacking whatever I want with my bio multi-tools. It's like five perks in the hacking tree. Fuck that. I can make as many bio, you know, multi-tools as I want. It's pretty ridiculous how powerful that micro assembler a perk is. And it works really well with the Tesla upgrade. I'd recommend not even thinking about the nano, nano blade. The Tesla uh, gun will allow you to do a lot of things but let's talk about uh, the rhino skin here the rhino dermal armor is something you really want to prioritize I end up picking the jump because I really like the traversal options that the jump provides you with but I really should have put this in like right away this is a right away sort of thing that rhino dermal armor uh, just like the cloak I'd recommend putting at least two points into that and having it maxed out uh, by the time you get to Golem City, let's say, definitely by the time you start going into that ARC facility, because the damage output of enemies in this in this high difficulty level, that I didn't ask for this, which is equal to the give me deus ex, but just has that permadeath added, the damage output of enemies in this are pretty extreme. Uh, so another thing that you might want to prioritize as well is the health upgrades, which... I didn't start getting into it until a little bit later too, but I'd say the, the damage reduction is definitely the most noticeable. If you don't have that Rhino Dermal Armor, you just die so, so fast. So fast. It's, it feels like you're playing Call of Duty. <laughs> I mean, you just, you just get burned down without that Rhino Dermal Armor in this high difficulty level. And though this is primarily a stealth build, you need to be ready for things to go badly, and you need to always be ready for that. So I end up picking this jump, but I really, really recommend you pick that Rhino Dermal Armor and get that uh, upgraded basically as soon as possible. That, the cloak, the Tesla gun, one point in the micro assembler, uh, the vision cone field, and maybe a little bit in the energy uh, recharge rate. I'd say those are your priority upgrades for the early game of I didn't ask for this mode. And getting back to this Tesla gun, it can be used to incapacitate hard targets like people in exosuits and also cameras, turrets, robots, anything you want. It is an incredible thing and it is auto-targeting. And once you get that distance upgrade for it, which I would recommend you prioritizing, it actually has really, really good distance. Uh, and later you can also give it multi-targeting abilities, but I, I wouldn't say, I would definitely say the quad targeting is not as necessary. The dual targeting is definitely nice, um, but getting the quad targeting, actually wiping that cursor across four targets before you release it is actually not that convenient. So the dual targeting is quite easy to get to pull off though in the heat of combat. Oftentimes it's easier to just do two quick dual targets than a big quad target, in my opinion. Alright, so for the weapon, since it's not all about the Tesla, you need a good gun. And you want a gun that can kind of do everything. And the gun I would recommend for that is the combat rifle. Here, as you see, if you go to that upper left on the metro and then go to this guy in the third floor of this apartment, you can get a silencer as well as a hollow sight. And I would recommend putting those on a combat rifle as soon as possible. I've got this Elite Edition one here. It's not really that different from the regular combat rifle. Um, and I would recommend using it in the single shot mode as much as possible and moving it out of that top left area so that you can quickly break down the weapons that you pick up. And the combat rifle, it's got good range, it's stealthy, and it's also got plentiful access to armor piercing ammunition, which is going to become really, really, really important uh, really soon, to be honest. The first major story mission has you in an area with a lot of cops and an exosuit 
and so you really want to be able to handle yourself if shit pops off against armored targets. Your takedowns, I would recommend using those as sort of an oh shit button, like I wasn't expecting them to be this close and I want this situation taken care of immediately, but for the most part you want to be either shooting people in the head with your combat rifle at mid-range, or tesling them and moving their body to where you want it to. The takedowns, they use energy, and that energy does not recharge in the way like if you use a cloak you can get some of that energy back. Um, you don't get your energy back from the takedowns, so not the most efficient way to take people out. Which is kind of opposed to the way a lot of stealth games work. Usually it's all about those melee takedowns, but in this one you really want to be prioritizing using your gun and your Teslas. Alright, so I would say definitely try and use armor piercing ammunition like all the time especially against armored targets of course but like just don't even carry around anything other than armor piercing ammunition is what I usually did and even with the arm AP ammo if you don't upgrade your, your the damage on your combat rifle to the max as soon as possible it doesn't kill uh, cops in one headshot so you have to double tap them or even triple tap them depending on the upgrade level of that combat rifle once you put the silencer on which lowers the damage a lot so be really careful about that. And here the Tesla is a great way to incapacitate those exosuits and take them out safely and efficiently without using that AP ammo. Here I am using regular combat rifle ammo and you can see it's like I'm throwing wet noodles at this guy. It's, it's basically pointless and it's, it's just kind of unsafe. Like what if you accidentally had your regular ammo in um, when you get into a fight with cops after dealing with the Diwali who are unarmored? Like, it's just not a variable that you want to keep around. There's enough AP ammo that you can buy. Money is easy to get. Uh, so definitely buy the AP ammo that you can in the stores once you've bought, like, all the weapon upgrades and other stuff that you need. And you can also find it in the world and find it off enemies. But the Tesla is really going to be your bread and butter, especially once you get that uh, distance upgrade. And as you can see here, really prioritize that Rhino Dermal Armor. If you don't have that to 4 by the time you get to Golem City, uh, it's going to be really unpleasant for you. Because in this Ark facility, the enemies start doing a shitload more damage. Um, so there, like, just landed about 5 shots on me and all my health was gone. So definitely start getting that Rhino Dermal Armor up ASAP and probably start investing in health. I should have invested in health earlier. So it's worth noting here, like you really want to arc that Tesla up to in the air to get it over cover. It really, it kind of goes in towards their stomach, like at their center of gravity, uh, the auto-targeting. So you can kind of finesse that auto-targeting to work better for you if you point it up in the air and kind of arc it over cover. And by the time you get to the Ark facility and have that encounter with Rucker, I would really recommend getting that Icarus landing module as well, because you don't want your round ending to a fall damage, and there's also a lot of great, really safe routes for getting out of here using that Icarus. So the Tesla is just the bread and butter. If you hit a drone or a robot with it, it's not going to completely knock it out like it would with a person, but it will freeze them up for a long, long time. So it's an easy way to take them out as long as you've got that AP ammunition. So here I'm fighting a bunch of unarmored targets, but you know, if I thought, oh, it's safe to use my combat rifle regular ammo now, and then a drone shows up, like it would have just ruined my day and maybe let this other drone sneak up before that so you know just play it super safe always be watching your back head on a swivel don't leave loose ends you know kill enemies if you can besides just knocking them out like this is not a pacifist run uh, and good luck it is it is really fun it is really intense it's not super hard but it is super frustrating because one mistake and it's over so I hope you enjoyed and I hope you stay milky